Well, as we look forward to the start of this afternoon's meeting, the first race in your programme already on the line. It's race one, it's left-handed sidecars, and as I mentioned earlier on, we had them down here at the Spring Classic. Uh, what do you think of that day? Will it be his day again today? We want to see them play with John Fish makes a brilliant start going into that first corner. It is indeed number 173, John Fish and Gary Moore that have got a considerable lead, but look at Bill Penfold coming through on the inside. Bill Penfold in second place at the moment, but he was back in fourth as they went into that first bend, and he's already closing the gap on John Fish. These two raced against each other an awful lot. They'll be watching each other how they work out their racing line on this circuit. So John Fish is doing great well this afternoon. In third spot is number 251, John Arnott. And, of course, passenger Russell still there, closing on Bill Penfold at the moment. But the man who looks to have everything sorted for this afternoon is the early leader, John Fish. Well, into the pit bend we go for the second time. And Bill Penfold starting to close that gap, working hard there in second place. And really, John Fish is coming down John Arnott still there in third place, losing contention with those front two runners at the moment. Number 151 is uh, Graham Hilton and uh, Barry Goodwin. A little way back in fourth place. Uh, not very often these races get uh, opened up as much as this, but Bill Penfold trying hard to get on turn with John Fish at the front. Into the last lap goes John Fish. And you see Bill Penfold ducking his head down as he comes past us. There's obviously uh, one or two of the stones that are causing him uh, a bit of grief. Watch them go down the back straight for the first, last time in race one. It's going to be a good ride from John Fish and Gary Moore. I'm sure that's going to please a lot of the crowd to see John Fish on form again. He takes the second flag. Bill Penfold rolls it off as he crosses the line in second. John Arnott finishes in third place. And fourth place taken by Graham Hill. of the afternoon a win for number 173 John Fish and Gary Moore in second place number two Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw in third place number 251 that of course is John Arnott and Russell Still and fourth place number 151 fifth place number 321 no sixth finisher the speed was 46.6 and the time 150.30 150.30 that equates to a speed, as I say, of 46.6. Nice to see that somebody's worked all that out as well. That's going to be interesting to see the different classes this afternoon and see if they get faster. We normally try and work that out from the times, don't we? But if somebody's done the aggregate speeds, that could be interesting. Hello. 1732 251 151 and 321. First result of the afternoon. For those of you that follow Speedway, I have been handed the semi final results of, and I'm going to try and pronounce this, a long ago. I think that's how you pronounce it, Lonigo. That's where they were racing last night. And the result reads that the victor on 13 points was Hans Nielsen. Billy Hamill qualified in second place, equal on 13 points. Greg Hancock finished on 11 points. Lee Adams finished on 11 points. And you're waiting for it. Yes, Gary Havelock has got through. He finished on 9 points. Gert Reese got through on 9 points. Amando Castagna got through on 9 points. And wait for this one. There was a mystery rider went over there as reserve. He got a ride. That rider was Andy Smith. And he's qualified on eight points. He's qualified in that um, eighth place. It means that he gets a ride at the world final. So those Andy Smith supporters out there, I'm sure we'll be very pleased with that. Riders that did miss out, very unfortunately, are Martin Dugard, John Yortson, and looking down the list, Backlap Millet, and there were a lot of other riders uh, in there. Brian Carger as well missed out. But uh, very interesting that Andy Smith came through as a reserve and he's now ended up getting a ride in the world final. For 
Terry Patchell. Change of passenger for Terry, of course. He's got Dominic Doyle in the chair. But we get underway with the race two of the afternoon. The man that finished second down here earlier on in the year has already broken through to get to the lead. You will have seen that Bill Penfold's been beaten this afternoon. That rider in front already is Luke Patchell and Julian Browning. They're to the front and watch them start to break away. They really did look in brilliant form earlier on in the year when I came down here at the Spring Classic. And I think they're going to take a lot of catching this afternoon. Very, very wide to the coming off that bottom bend. Chris Berwick I can pick up is in third place, but for the moment I can't work out who that is in second. Oh, that does look like it's Terry Patchell now they've gone along the back straight. My stretch is an obvious, I can see the number on the far side. Terry Patchell up in second place, but there's no catch in this Luke Patchell at the moment. He really looks to be in good form this afternoon. The lion card is starting to fly. Instructions there for Chris Berwick from Kevin Jarvis. Oh, I think he's uh, asking his driver to take a much tighter line on that bottom bend. That he does. As we look to see the last night flag going out for Luke Patchell. Well, I think he's uh, proving to us in his first ride that he's going to be the man to catch this afternoon. Not really be able to close that gap for a second spot. Good stuff going on. As you can see, number 23, Billy Penfold and Carl Bell have moved through in the third spot. Terrible start for them, but they look to have recovered from it now and are going to get that third place. Oh, a very casual finish from Luke Patchell. You can see the confidence in Luke Patchell. Just coast across the line. Let's not waste too much effort. And Terry Patchell finishing behind him in second place. Third spot is taken by number 23, Billy Penfold and Carl Bell. DC left-hand sidecar, still event three, a win for number 808, that's Luke Patchell and Julian Browning. In second place, number 188, that's Terry Patchell and Dominic Doyle. Third place, number 23, Billy Penfold and Carl Bell. In fourth place, number 174, Duncan Fish and Clive Holland. Fifth place was taken by number 68, no other finishes. The winning time, 150.73, I'm told that equates to 46.73. <laughs> My apologies there, I've got uh, the speed wrong, it was 46.53, you see just that little bit quicker than race one, and interesting enough that uh, Luke Patchell decided to slow down as he finished that uh, race, so interesting to watch as we go on, as we move to race three, and a chance to see in action for the first time our 350 competitors. Well, I know we've uh, talked many a time through this year to say how well the 350 class has in fact improved this year. There's a lot of riders uh, picking up 350 machines, so it's going to be an interesting class to watch. As we see the first ride, it looks like Daisy is going around the outside. And do I see that we've also got John Dorr out there on a the 350? Well, that's interesting to see. I said a lot of riders were going to this 350 class because it really is becoming competitive. That uh, looks to me like Richard Mutton is another rider that's picked up a 350 now. It's the first time I've seen Richard on a 350. He's a very, very capable rider, of course, and then it's Richard Mutton has got to the front. Keith Potts is up there in second place. Starting to get crowded in that bottom corner, but Richard Mutton now pulling away down that back straight. So perhaps Keith Potts has got somebody to race with this afternoon. He's uh, had some hard board battles on this circuit earlier on in the year, but he did come through with the victory at the end of the day. Richard Mutton looks to be taking that. Steve Wilson is a rider up in third. He's lost contention with those front two as Keith Potts tries to go after Richard Mutton. He's not successful as we've lost two riders on that bottom corner. Two riders slowing up on the yellow flag. The race continues as we've got Richard Mutton coming off that bit bend. The checkered flag indeed will go out this time. No, it won't because the red flag has been put up. Oh well, wrong for me to make decisions like that, isn't it? But <laughs> Oh, 
it sounds as if we're ready to go for the restart of race three and we get underway and again it is he boss has made a good race now this completely this time remember he was leading the race before it was stopped so he's the one that's got to do all the work back in fourth place at the moment or is he he moves through into third place he's going after steve wilson and already looks for that second spot he Potts is the man that's got away and made a much, much better start this time. He leads it and comes round off that pit bend. Steve Wilson is right there with him, just in third place. Dave Beers is up in fourth at the moment. But the fight's going to be on for that first spot because Richard Mustard will be disappointed with the fact that he was leading when that race was stopped. He'll go after Keith Potts to show him that he's determined this afternoon in this 350 class. A brilliant corner from Richard Mustard there. He threw it in hard, held his nice the inside line going into this top end and he does get it. He forces Keith Watts to go wide and Keith Watts knew he was there. Well, a brilliant ride from Richard Mustard goes down that back straight. Well, I think that the 356 this year is going to be absolutely spectacular. That, of course, is later on in the year down at Cat Farm, so that's one to look out for. We've got the 250 and 350 in this centre this year. And when you see the class of rider that is now joining the 350 class, it really is turning out to be a brilliant class this year. Well, Keith Potts still there in second place. We're disappointed with the gap that he's allowed to open up between him and Richard Mustin. But the second player goes out in front of the lead and gets his first win of the afternoon. Keith Potts gets second. Steve Wilson finishes in third, so he is in fourth. And following through in sixth place, number 26, Mark Giles. is Richard Mustin. In second place, number 175, Keith Fox. Third place, number 215, Steve Wilson. Fourth place, number 139, Dave Mears. Fifth place, number 26. Sixth place, number 17. Seventh place, 331. Eighth place, 171. Ninth place, 36. And tenth place, 20. No other finishes. The speed was 52.90. 52.90 and the time equates to 136.10. So 136.10, it should have been 12, 175, 215, 139, 26, 17, 331, 171, 36 and 20. For race four, we stay with the 350s and we wonder, is there anybody going to be as quick as Richard Musson? If we look to the lineup, we've got Mark Seabright in this lineup, Roy Sizemore. Alan Harmer, Ricky Scarborough, Jonathan Duke, Mitchell Gordon, of course. Our ACU man, of course, Colin Sweeby. He'll be going and having a, a ride this afternoon. And, of course, Paul Hurry, who's done well down here before now. We've watched him do what happened to Mitchell Gordon. Gone after them as they go into that first bend, but it is Mitchell Gordon that's got to the front. Paul Hurry goes round the outside as we indeed lose Alan Harmer on that first bend, but he quickly picks his bike up, kept the machinery running, and gets underway. But what's happening at the front? Paul Hurry has taken over the lead from Mitchell Gordon as they come round that pit bend for the first time. Paul Hurry leads. Mitchell Gordon is second. Ricky Scarborough is right up in third. All figure of Mark Seabright perhaps to come through. He's holding fourth at the moment, but doesn't look happy with it at all. As we go down that back straight with Paul Hurry leading and setting a cracking pace. So we'll anxiously watch to see what sort of time Paul Hurry puts up. It could be a great trap between him and him. later on in the afternoon. But Mitchell Gordon, not out of contention at all, he's still there in second. Starts to come under pressure now from Ricky Scarborough. It'd be a good scrap for that second spot. Mitchell looks over his shoulder. He knows that he's got somebody there. He'll be trying to hold a tight line as he goes into this pit bend. Into the last lap goes for Hurry though, the leader. Looks very, very quick. Garber still looking for a way through on the inside. Oh, Mitchell gone, but again, Mitchell tries to close the door. He's uh, making Ricky Garber work for it. Garber goes through on the far side. So a change in that second spot. It's going to be a checkered flag this time as they come past us. It's Paul Hurry. This is the first ride of the afternoon. Ricky Scarborough has got that second place. Mitchell Gordon hangs on the third. Rui Sizemore just in. Mark Seabite to the line. Four, four place. Of the 350s, 
50 solo event one and a win for number 86 Paul Hurry. In second place number 127 Ricky Scarborough. Third place number 9 Mitchell Gordon. Fourth place number 231 Roy Sizemore. Fifth place number 167 that's Mark Seabright and sixth place number 25. Seventh place number 48. Eighth place number 27. Ninth place 121. Tenth place 69. 11th place, 136, 12th place, 71, and the speed, 54.06, yes, it was a quicker time, 135.62, 135.62 for number 86, in race 4, Paul Hurry. We move on to the 1000cc right hand side cars for the first time this afternoon. It's event four, and we start with the first leg. As they get underway, we've got a very impressive lineup of right hand side cars here this afternoon. Rustling, of course, you'll remember, has got his brother Andy on the chair, and he's got to the lead straight away. He said he doesn't like being behind on these dusty conditions. Pit Bend for the first time. Well, over Matthews and passenger Peter Jones had such a good ride last weekend at Tunbridge. They lead the Masters Championship at the moment and do look to be in such great form at the moment. Rustling tucks in the second spot. Comfortably now in second place as he's getting his, his brother Andy used to ride in quite some years. I didn't embarrass Andy by asking him how many years ago it was that he rode last for Russell. He has done this before, as I'm sure a lot of you have recognised, that he's moving all the right places. Oh, Loma answer to Ivor Matthews, though, at the moment. He leads quite comfortably now from Russell in second. He's going on Jerry Allen is the rider that's going after him in the fourth place at the moment, but uh, they are never expected to see a gap like this open up between first and second as they come round off that last bend for their first race of the afternoon, and it's going to be a win. The engine sounds absolutely perfect. Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones rustling, and Andy finishing second place. Colin Hutton and Anderson Tony Baseby finish in third. Side cars a win for Alpin number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In second place, Alpin number 6, Russelling and Andy Ng. Third place, Alpin number 3, that's Colin Hutton and Tony Baseby. Fourth place, number 55, Jerry Adams and Adam Cowper Smith. Fifth place was number 32, and sixth place, number 28. The speed, 53.92, the winning time, 126.31. 53.92 then, 126.31. Race 6 in your program. As we look to that far side, it looks like Rob Wilson has made a brilliant start going into that first bend. John Halsey goes after him. Mick Cave is up there in third place and Tim Benny just behind them. Well, Mick Cave's had a brilliant Well, he's had some good results down here. I remember last year I came down to the Man of Kent meeting and Rob looked like he could have stayed out there all day long. He looked absolutely brilliant. He looked really comfortable. And afterwards when I spoke to him, he said he thoroughly enjoys this circuit. Well, he looks to be in good form again. John Halsey pulls it tight in the centre of the bend. Big Cave. Second place, Big Cave right on the back. He's made the change 
change direction. So we we'll are looking for a quick exit on that bend as they go down that back straight. Look how John Aldridge had to go wide because he drove hard in the bend, but as he pulls it tight going into this top bend. This is where Mick Cave looks good. As he holds a very, very tight, gets on the green grass on the inside of this bend. to Rob Wilson and Vince Jones at the moment though they really are hoping to see how the times look when they come to the finishing line we've seen a time already for Ivor Matthews we'll watch to see how it compares to that of Rob Wilson and Vince Jones and indeed that's how they're going to finish Rob Wilson takes it John Horsey hangs on that second place gets third and it looked like just on the line Dave Heath might have taken that fourth place Wilson has set up a quicker time. It's a win in race six for outfit number 24, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. In second place, outfit number 13, John Halsey and Tony Miles. Third place, number five, is Mick Cave and passenger, of course, Mick Stace. In fourth place, number 18, Dave Heath and Nigel Cross. Fifth place, outfit number 12. And in sixth place, number one, two, three. The time was 125.88, as I say, a little bit faster. That equates to 55 miles an hour, an average speed, 55 miles an hour, 125.88 the time. So we've now seen wins for Ivor Matthews and for Rob Wilson. We look to race seven. A change in this one, no 773. That should have been, of course... Uh, Glenn Richmond, but his place is taken by number 33, Jeff Sims and Rob Miles. Roger Meester goes in this one, Dave Steer, number 17, Peter Adams, of course the New Zealand Speedway rider, over here to see what the race is like in the UK, so we want to see what he can do, a very, very experienced competitor, as we watch to see them go down that back straight. Into the first bend goes Roger Meester and Shane Lapham. They won the Spring Classic earlier on this year. They'll know their way around this circuit. And he does look to be a good form of the way through in the third, so we watch to see what this very powerful outfit the Peter Adams rides can actually do on this circuit. Roger Misa away at the moment. Dave Steer moves through well in third place. That was a terrific bend from Dave Steer. He lined himself up brilliantly for the back straight and powered through on the inside of Peter Adams. that Peter Adams rides. Of course, more used to the very small speedway circuits that they have over in uh, New Zealand. No question about the ability of Roger Meester and Shane Lapham this afternoon. They really do want to be in control. Neville Pettit not being able to close that gap on there. Peter Adams still there in that fourth spot. But this one really opening up now as they come into the last bend and they start to see the chequered flag. Interesting once again to see how this time compares. It's a win for Alpin number 51, Roger Meester and Shane Lapham. Neville Penfold crosses the line in second, Dave Steer in third. We lost Peter Adams on that mid bend. But he indeed is going to finish his first race at the back of the field. First leg of the right hand side car to win for outfit number 51, Roger Meester and Shane Lapple. In second place, outfit number two, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Third place, number 17, that is Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Fourth place, number 33, that of course was our reserve rider, Jeff Sims and Rob Miles. Fifth place, number 25, and sixth place, number 16. The speed, 53.82, it means in the time, 126.08. So the fastest time so far set by Rob Wilson in race six. As we look to race eight, still with event four, the 1000 CC chairs. And is there anybody in this one that can set up a faster time? We've got a change of rider here. No 39, Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. Their place being taken by our first reserve. That was Richard Brown and Ian Aram. It says in your program it should have been... Uh, Chris Berwick, but Ian Aram is the passenger for number 38, and he takes the place of ride number 39.
Mike Bankster, of course, unfortunately not able to take part this afternoon. He toppled it over in the pit bend in practice. He damaged his wrist. Doesn't feel that uh, he would be able to hold on. At least that was the last I heard grabbing for the binoculars because did I see a set of white leathers coming out then? Well, I am amazed. Mike Baxter is in fact riding. The man has done well. When I spoke to him in the pits, he had a, a wrist that looked three times the size. He said he didn't think he'd be able to hold on, but it looks as if he's going to have a go. Oh, there's another rider that's got to the front, which we haven't seen down here before. He's a very experienced speedway rider. That is, of course, outfit number one in your program. Oh, they say that number seven comes flying through Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Oh, they set themselves up now coming out of that top bend. But still number one, Richard Moore and Grant Hinkling. This outfit, of course, set up for Speedway, much the same as two or three of them are that we've seen here this afternoon. They're rigid suspension. And he looks to be going well in second spot at the moment. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, though. Setting looks to be a cracking pace. Well, I thought that Ken would uh, try and show us that he can ride this circuit uh, because Brilliant rides earlier on in the year, but he's bad mechanical But he does look to be in good form at the moment. Oh, I'm anxiously looking at uh, Richard Moore's outfit because uh, I've just been told that could be one of Gary's outfits. And a brilliant ride there from Mike Bankster. He's finished in third spot. As I say, if you'd have been over with me in the pits when I spoke to him earlier on this afternoon, he did have a wrist three times the size of what I think it should have been. But he's uh, done exceptionally well. A good result for him. And it has been confirmed that uh, Richard Moore's outfit is a grass track outfit. It was built for Gary Moon. And Gary, of course, back in Australia now. So... Uh, a good achievement there from Richard. First time on the grass that I've ever seen him ride. Fourth and final of the first leg in the right hand side car is a win for outfit number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. In second place, number one, Richard Moore and Grant Hinkling. In third place, number 88, Mike Baxter and Steve Bassett. Fourth place, number 38. Fifth place, number 112. And sixth place, number 191. Speed 53.0, the time 127.0. of problems on the start line, somebody over a key by the look of it, staff are still not happy, somebody pushing those tapes a bit too hard. And away we go as we get started with the first of the 500cc car, and the first of the Oh, Ricky Sanford, I could see going into that first bend. Vince Kinchin's come through on the inside, but it is Calvin Tatum that's got away. Oh, tremendous first corner from Calvin Tatum as it's Mark Seawright that's got the best of that scrap for second place. He's moved up to second, but he knows he's got riders all around him. Calvin Tatum looks to be away, though. He might be third. Ricky Scarborough is up into fourth place, but Vince Kinchin is close to them as well for that fourth. Kinchin riding a brilliant tight corner on that top bend there but he still has to be content with what is now fifth place as we look to see them come around the pit bend for the second time. Kelvin Tatum looked in great form last week in the British Rock. He was looking forward to riding another level of road down here early on in the year. He told Kelvin it was a good circuit and he looked to be making the best of it. Mark Seabright still there in that second place. Watch Steve Wilson holding third at the moment. He'll be stalking Mark Seabright all the time as they come round off that pit bend. Ignore the fact that Calvin Tatum is riding. He's riding absolutely brilliantly. He's got away from the rest of the field. This could be a very close finish for this second place. Oh, let's say that Steve Wilson goes wide, but he'll be quick down that back straight. Watch and see if he makes an attempt on this. We've got one more lap to go, the first of the 500cc. 
Vince Kitchen still working hard in that fifth place trying to close on Ricky Scarborough. Well, as we look to see that chequered flag coming out, a great start to the afternoon for rider number 21, that's Kelvin Taylor. Mark Seabright wins the battle for the second place. Steve Wilson finishes his third, Ricky Garner in fourth, and Vince Kinchin crosses the line in fifth. talking for a long time. Who was counting the laps then, then, eh? I'm sure Kelvin Taylor was. He'd done an extra one, didn't he? No, we can't give you the time. It was, of course, a win for Kelvin Tatum, number 21. In second place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In third place, number 215, Steve Wilson. In fourth place, 04, Ricky Sanford. In fifth place, number 8. In sixth place, number 2. In seventh place, number 174. 8th place, number 22, and ninth place, 171. No other finishes, and I'm sorry, no speed or time. We stopped the watch on four lamps, but they continue to have another one. I'm sure they enjoy the practice anyway. Well, if you want to put the time in, they did keep the watch going. It was 152.34. Uh, not to worry. <laughs> Oh, they're being flashed now. They're saying they kept one of the watches going, you know. We've got about half a dozen in here, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Race 10 then, let's turn our attention over to that. We're still with the 500cc solo, of course, and a chance to see the rest of the lineup. That won't be because we've got Race 11 is leg one as well. Now, as we look down the lineup of Race 10, uh, Dave Steen goes in this one. Adrian Moore we see in this one. Richard Mutton, of course, we've seen out on a 350 already this afternoon. He was in great form, so we wonder what he can do on a 500. Paul Hurry, of course, was on a 350 as well. He had a great ride earlier on. Well, let's watch to see what happens. Dave Steen would have moved here. And one driver I should have mentioned, of course, Steve Schofield. As he moves to the front going into that first bend, the dust clouds go up in that first corner. But Steve Schofield, riding speedway last night, when I asked him how he got on, he said, well, okay, he said, I got a few points, but... He looks in good form, Steve Well, hurry as the rider that closed up on him in that second spot. Not much between those two now, as Richard Mutton has followed them up as well. He's holding third place at the moment. Around that we go for the second time, Steve Schofield. Looks to be in good form, and a beat Kelvin Tatum in that first ride. Second, Richard Musson in third. Good stuff now going on for this fourth place. You can see Dave Steen trying to move through on the inside of oh, rider number 14, Ian Humphrey. Well, he didn't make it that time, but keep your eyes on that one as I can ask you now to try and stick with it. Keep your eyes on Paul Hurry as well, because Paul Hurry is now going after Steve Schofield. Scurry looking down at him on the side. There must be problems with Steve Schofield. But Paul Hurry takes over the lead. He won't be worried that Paul Scurry's got problems. He'll go to the front and Paul Hurry now gets himself to the front. Great scrap still going on for that fourth place. Dave Steen trying every way he can to get round and get the front. This time it looks as if he's done it. As we go through the line, we've got the checker flag for Paul Hurry. He's going for with problem finishing his checker. Richard Mustard in third and Dave Steen has won that battle. Just in front of Ian Humphrey. Win for number 86, a brilliant ride from Paul Hurry. In second place, number one, Steve Schofield. Third place, number 12, Richard Musson. Fourth place, number 41, Dave Steen. Fifth place, number 14, Ian Humphreys. Sixth place, number 154. Seventh place, number 51. Eighth place, 300. Ninth place, 555. Tenth place, 971. Eleventh, 150, no 12th finisher, the time was 131.77, that equates to a speed of 55.70, 55.70.
And disappointing there to see that Neville Tatum had problems in that first ride. He was brilliant earlier on in the year down in this circuit. So still the third heat of this leg one ride. Changing this one is no Keith Massingham. That's 117. His place is taken by 06 Steve Jeffery. So 06 comes in in place of 117. Look out for this time. Prescription of course. Paul Mitchell, Ben Howe. Oh, he wants to see the race. And it is uh, Ben Howe to me, he got to the front, we pick them out as they come round off that first bend, that is Ben Howe that's got to the front, Ricky Scarborough up in second place, and Paul Mitchell is the rider in third as they move through down that back straight. Well, Chris Tritton coming through brilliantly as he moves through the field and gets himself up into fourth place. But Ben Howe, he seems to be a very good form on the last track of the moment. Very, very disappointed that we didn't see Ben at the British Masters last week. But we've got to say well done to him for being picked to go and uh, represent the England Speedway team. And I'm going to say no more about that subject whatsoever. It's just great to see Ben riding this well on the grass track this year. Comes faster. He's quite comfortable now for Ricky Carberry. Paul Mitchell driving on the ground. In third place to try and close up. Chris Tritton is riding there in fourth place. Look for that far side, really there doesn't seem to be anybody who's going to catch these front four. Ben Hell passes us for the third time into his last lap, Ricky Scarborough. I'm sure would have wanted to be a bit closer to Ricky Scarborough than he is. Chris Tritton's still there, he's four faces, he's not going to have to the gap at all. But if we look to see the second of man, Ready. This is the last of these first leg rides for the 500cc competitors. Ben Howell takes his first checker flag of the afternoon. Ricky Scarborough finishes his second, Paul Mitchell in third, and Chris Tritton crosses the line in fourth. Race 11 then, a win for number 87, that is of course Ben Howell. In second place, number 127, Ricky Scarborough. Third place, number 29, that's Paul Mitchell. Fourth place, number 3, Chris Tritton. Fifth place, number 23, Mike Trevitt. Sixth place, number 69. Seventh place, number 212. Eighth place, number 151. Ninth place, number 19. No other finishes, the speed was 54.54. And the time, car class we know that number 173 John Fish had a win first time out he got very very bunched in that first corner he went for a tight line was forced wide but now forcing his way through he's already to the front as they go into the pit bend for the first time number 173 then is John Fish and John Fish and Gary Moore look to be in great form as the dust clouds fly towards us. And though I won't laugh and say they didn't go in my eyes, but I'm sure uh, we'll be keeping your fingers crossed the same as I am that this dust does disappear and go the other way. John Fish really does this this afternoon. John Arnott trying to close the gap. No one's assured at the moment. Steve Palmer and Dave Green are up in third place, and they're the reserve crew that have come in this afternoon, obviously somebody else pulling out. But as we watch to see them go round the fifth bend, you can see John Fish and Gary Moore look to be in great form this afternoon. They've had one win already this afternoon, they go into their last lap in the second line, leading exactly where they wanted to be. Number 251, John Arnott and Russell Steele, still there in second. Good scrap going on with this third place. Number 321, Steve Palmer and Dave Green being pushed very, very hard. 
and as they push hard, it looks as if they have indeed lost that uh, third place. As you watch to see them come towards the checkered flag. John Fick finishes second checkered flag in the afternoon. John Arnold finishes in second place. Bill Davis and Rick Davis in his With the second leg ride to win for number 173, John Fish and passenger Gary Moore. In second place, number 251, John Arnott and Russell Steele. Third place, number 217, that's a reserve crew, Phil Davis and Richard Davis. In fourth place, number 321. Fifth place, number 174. And sixth place, number 68. The speed was 48.19, a time of 146.78. 146.78. So two wins for John Fish so far this afternoon as we turn our attention to race 13. And as I look to those riders, we've got Luke Patchell. He had a win first time out. Again, he's out with Bill Penfold, who had a second first time out. But also Terry Patchell, who had a second first time out. So this promises to be a good one. has made the best of that first start. Well, from the start, he did that first bend, I should say, as I was trying to pick up the other riders. Bill Penfold is the rider in second. Terry Patchell, the rider in third. So, these three crews that we expected to be right at the very front, exactly where we wanted them to be. Luke Patchell, of course, has seen John Fish had two wins so far. Bill Penfold, going for the inside line. It's just going to be a good I'm sure Bill won't be happy with being beaten by Luke twice. Of course, this is how they finished when they came out for their first ride. Now oh, Terry Patchell looks to have lost the ground on these two and yeah goes through Bill Penfold moving to the front as they go round that back straight for the second time. Oh, it's exactly what we wanted to see, Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw getting to the front because we know it's going to be a cracking final. Luke Patchell and Julian Browning still there closely in second place. Oh, gap back to third place but uh, I don't think Luke Patchell will be giving an inch at all, he'll be trying to close on that lead but nice to see that Bill Penfold is in good form this afternoon with these left hand side cars as the dust cows go up as they come past us Terry Patchell still there in third Graham Hilton is holding fourth place but really all eyes I think on number two the leader at the moment Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw as they come round that pit bend for the last time in race 13 to the line they go there's the checkered flag for that result they know that they've beaten Luke Patchell Outfit number two, Bill Penfold and passenger Nigel Shaw. In second place, 808, Luke Patchell and Julian Browning. In third place, number 188, Terry Patchell and Dominic Doyle. Fourth place goes to 151. And fifth place, outfit number 23, with problems there just pushing over the line. Oh, with a speed of 48.22, the time was 146.54. Race 14, we move back into the 350 class, which is called their second ride this afternoon. Quickly picking out whether we've got any of the uh, early winners. Of course, we've got Richard Musson going in this one, and we've got Paul Hurry going in this one. So, the two heat winners from the first ride, they both go in this one. Looks to me like Steve Wilson have made the best of that. They're going to the first bend, but look at those two coming through. 
Richard Masson in the orange leathers on the outside, Paul Hurry on the inside. Those two were not in front as they went in that first bend, but they certainly appeared in front as we go down the back straight. Into this fifth bend then for the first time, and Richard Masson on the inside. They both had a win first time out. It promised to be a cracking heat. The two riders locked together as they come out of that top bend for the second time. Oh, both of them will be eager to show that they're capable of beating each other. Richard Mustin, a brilliant rider, Richard Mustin. First time I've seen him on a 350 run. Sure he's ridden one before. Paul Hurry, we know turn to this class. He knew it was going to be competitive. He loves this circuit. There's a stage there for Richard Mustin. Well, he put it very, very hard into the centre of the bend. He lost traction completely. And Paul Hurry goes to the front taking advantage. I'm going off that fifth bend for the third time. He did do his last lap now as he goes faster. So psychologically, that will be a good win for Paul Hurry. Steve Wolf is still there in third. I can see Ricky Scarborough back in fifth place at the moment. But as we look to the far side, Paul Hurry does look to be in command this afternoon. Around this pit bend, he looks in the form. in the three minutes of the afternoon. Richard Mustard is in second place, he in third. Mark Giles is finishing in fourth, just in front of Richard Scarborough. That, of course, is Paul Hurry. In second place, number 12, Richard Musson. Third place, number 215, that's Steve Wilson. And fourth place, number 26, Mark Giles. Fifth place, number 127. Sixth place, number 121. Seventh place, 96. Eighth place, 27. Ninth place, 48. Tenth place, number 20. And eleventh place, number 36. 54.4 was the speed and a time of 134.09. 54.4 at 134.09 the time. Race 15, we move into, we're still with event one, it's their second leg ride. And a chance to see in action once again. Pete Fox, who had a second first time out. Hoping for a much better result this time. He was back in fourth place with his first ride. As we look to that far side, we've lost one rider on that first bend. And he looks to be up and okay as he pushes the machinery off the track. We look to the front of the riders coming past us, and we've got Pete Fox leading the same is. Roy Sizemore is the rider up in third place. Well, I thought that Pete Fox might have felt pretty confident with this ride. He looks to be doing exactly as I expected. So this will. Uh, I'm sure. Three, three, one, Paul Watson in fourth place at the moment, but as we look to that far side, there's no stopping Keith Potts at the moment. Last lap flag, and he's got some fast last day. Me and Jill Derry. Roy Sines will hold the spot. Mark John Dorman is now moving through in the fourth place. Good to see John Dorman going well. I'll be interested to find out later whether this was, in fact, his first 350 ride, because we're so used to seeing him on a 250, of course. But as the checkered flag goes out, Keith Potts takes the win. Dave Mears finishes in second. Roy Sines more in third. Or John Dorman. Four, Keith Potts, his first in the 350 this afternoon. Ace 175, the number in second place, number 139, Dave Mears. Third place, number 231, Roy Sizemore. Fourth place, number 76, John Dorma. Fifth place, number nine, Mitchell Godden. And fifth place, number 331. Seventh place, number 69. Eighth place, 136. Ninth place, 71. And tenth place, number 171. The winning time, 136.55. That equates to a 53 average miles per hour. <laughs> Red shirt. 
Yeah. 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 to see in action once again Rob Wilson and Vince Jones they set the fastest time of the first legs but it's Neville Penfold that gets to the first bend in first place it all closes up on that first bend and Neville Penfold goes very very wide and now Rob Wilson looks for that front he's gone through to the front but Rob Neville Penfold comes underneath him beautifully Oh, Rob Wilson drove very, very hard in that pit bend, and the place has changed as quickly as I can talk. Neville Penfold got through to the front once again. Again, he's gone wide on this first bend. Rob Wilson is... Bend. He's keyed himself up nicely. You'll see a drive down this back straight, I'm sure, but Neville Penfold is equal to it. He pulls away down that back straight. Colin Hutton still up there in third place, keeping ahead of Dave Heath, and Neville Penfield has again gone wide on this top end. This and shown that he's very, very quick on this surface. He drives hard coming round off that pit bend. He'll be pleased to be back in front. And he does ride this top bend superbly well. He seems to have it much better set up than Neville as he goes a little bit wide and Neville's got it perfect this time. Well, tremendous race between those two crews, but Rob Wilson is the one that ends up with a maximum from two rides. Race 16 then, and his second win of the afternoon for outfit number 24, it's Rob Wilson and Vince Jones, so a good win once again from them. In second place, outfit number 2, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. In third place, outfit number 3, that of course is Colin Hutton and Tony Baysby. Outfit number 18 finished in fourth place, Dave Heath. In fifth place, number 88, Mike Baxter. And in sixth place, number 33. The speed was 53.35, the time 126.76, so two wins from two rides for outfit number 24. And uh, sitting behind me is Don Niamis, he's just informed me that, was I aware that uh, Rob has moved back to 1000cc? I wasn't, thanks Don, <laughs> that keeps everybody informed. Of course they've been pursuing with that 750cc machine, now back to a 4000cc, as we get underway with race 17. Russelling gets to the front as they move into that first bend. He holds it as they come around that first bend, but it's getting very good. John Horsey looking for that third place as well. Those two almost locked together in that pit bend. John Horsey trying to force Kevin Simmons wide as he looks for that third place. But Russelling and Andy Ng still holding first place at the moment as they come round off that top bend for the second time. Dave Steer again looks for an inside. Russell looks very, very quick down the straight. Pulls away again on that far side. Locks it all up. Drives in hard on this top bend. This is where Dave Steer goes very, very tight. This time he's a little bit wider. He drives a bit tight. Into the last lap we go. Trying to keep my eyes on that third place as well because John get through in the third. Kevin Simmons having a good ride at the moment though, holding that third spot as we look to see them come round off the top bend for the last time in this seat. The checkered flag goes to Russelling and Andy Ng. Second place, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Third place goes to Kevin Simmons and Mark Mangyard. They have to be content with a fourth spot, second time out. Right hand side cars, it's second leg of course. A win for outfit number six, Russell Ng. So that's a win and a second place for Russell. In second place, number 17, that's Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In third place, number 32, Kevin Simmons and Mark Langyard. 
In fourth place, number 13 is John Halsey and Tony Miles. Fifth place, number 123, and sixth place, number 191. The speed, 53.80, 53.80, and the time, 126.07. 126.07. But well, we've seen 6 and 16 and 17. We now move to race 18. And what a cracking race this promises to be. Ivan Matthews and passenger Peter Jones. They're number 15. Watch out for them. Number 7, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Both these crews had a win first time out. to see what happens as Mick Cave has made a brilliant start so this is going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons as Mick Cave has got to the first corner first Ken Lane goes after him and those two go very very wide Peter Adams now trying to come through as he cuts across the front I've got to honestly say that my heart was in my mouth then as I watched what was happening with Peter Adams I could see him going straight across the front of everybody but who got the best of it? It was Ivor Matthews that came out of all that lot in the first corner, Ken Lane has managed to hang on to second place as he's holding second. And I'm sorry to say, the one that lost out of all that who uh, went extremely wide. Oh, well, he cuts across in front of Peter Adams this time, so he's holding third place, or is he? As the dust starts to clear. Ivor Matthews, though, in great form at the moment, showing exactly why he's leading the British Masters Championship at the moment. Comes round off that bottom bend and passes. Ken Lane still there in second place. Peter Adams is now back in fourth place. But as we watch this far side, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones come around that top bend into the checkered flag. So they maintain the maximum, staying with the position. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards finishing second. Oh, what an incredible first bend that turned out to be. And I'm pleased to say that everybody got away with it. For the win for outfit number 15, that of course is Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Their second win of the afternoon. They've only had two rides. In second place, outfit number 7, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. They look to be in good form this afternoon. And in third place, outfit number 5, and didn't they deserve that place? Mick Cave and Mick Stace. In fourth place, number 16, Peter Adams and John Gray. In fifth place, number 112. And sixth place, number 28. The speed worked out to be an average of 53.70. And the time, 126.25. 126.25. So, the leaderboard has started to change. We look to race 19 and chance to see our only other first leg winner. That, of course, is outfit number 51, Roger Issa and Shane Lapham. Race 19 already on the line, but not quite underway as we watch on that far side. Looks to me like Roger Mesa has got the very outside gate that hasn't looked to be too good a gate to have, and indeed he hasn't come out of it. Oh, it looks to be Richard Brown who's got to the front, but now Roger has got going. He goes right the way round the outside as he starts to change in that first bend. Richard Brown goes wide and brings everybody else with him. Richard Moore has gone through on the inside as well as Roger Misa now dives in front of Richard Moore for second place. So Richard Brown leading then from Roger Misa in second place, Richard Moore in third spot at the moment. Oh, a gr good ride from, uh, well I was going to say that was uh, Richard Brown, of course it was Jerry Adams that was in front. and Shane Lapham leading then from Jerry Adams and Adam Calvert smith Richard Moore and Grant Hinkling still holding third place. Oh, as we watch to see them come round, of course, Roger Misi will be aware that we've got two other riders on back.
Richard Moore showing that he can ride the grass as well. And of course, been corrected from what I said earlier on. We know that Richard did ride the grass before he started Speedway and showing that he can come back with a vengeance. The checker flag will be made ready this time and it's going to be three riders that go through on a maximum from this fast one to be Shane Lapham win. What an interesting competition it's really going to be. We look forward to a fantastic final at the end of the day. Three crews now on maximum points from two rides. And Shane Lapham in second place, number 55, Jerry Adams and Adam Calvert Smith. In second, third place, outfit number one, Richard Moore and Grant Hinkling. In fourth place, number 25, Rob Wilson Jr. And in fifth place, number 12, sixth place, number 38. The speed was 53.01, the time 127.61, 127.61, 51, 55, 1, 25, 12 and 38. That completes the second leg of the sidecars as we move now to the second legs of the 500cc. We look to race 20, they're already underway to come past us for the first time. Schofield had a second place first time out. We thought he had a problem and it does look as if Steve Wilson's fallen on that first bend. Uh, looking to see that Steve Wilson does get up. They're moving the machinery off the circuit. I'm pleased to see that Steve Wilson is indeed up. Steve Schofield leading as he comes right up. Mustard is the rider that's gone after him. Just starts to flow as it comes past us. Steve Schofield looked very good in his first ride. He slowed towards the end of the ride, so we can assume he had some sort of problem. But looks to be in very determined form as he comes past us. Looking over his shoulder, he's second. He'll know he's Richard Hunt in second. start to close up for that uh, third, fourth and fifth place. Oh, sorry, I should say fourth, fifth and sixth place. No question around who's doing the leading. Steve is going a long way away in front of the rest of the field. Oh, quickly looking through the rest of the heats we've got to come. Certainly we've got a lot of our first heat winners coming together in this second ride. But making sure he stays right up there on the point, Steve Schofield takes the win from his second ride. Richard Mustin looks good in second place. Ricky Scarborough finishes third spot, and Paul Mitchell it is who wins that battle for Paul. Yeah. Yeah. The second leg for the 500 cc and uh, showing us that he's going to be a hard man to beat this afternoon. Number one, Steve Schofield. In second place, number 12, Richard Mustard. Third place, number 127, Ricky Scarborough. Fourth place, number 29, Paul Mitchell. Fifth place, number 174. Sixth place, number 51. Seventh place, number 2. Eighth place, number 22. Ninth place, 300. Tenth place, 69. 11th place, 116, no 12th finisher, the speed 55.13, and the time 132.67. So 132.67. And interestingly enough, we look at that and see that there were no first leg winners going in race 21. We have got one going in race... Oh, I was looking for number 21 then, in race 20 of course I meant, but race 21 is... Uh, Chance to see one of those first leg winners, that indeed was Paul Hurry, number 86, Paul, this time though, he's a long, long way back. Ian Humphreys is the man that's got away. Paul Hurry works his way through on the inside. He's up to second place. Well, only just in second place. They've so seen on the far outside of those riders fighting for that second place. And now Paul Hurry goes for the lead. He drives hard around that pit bend. There's problems for Ian Humphreys. It does look to be as if most of the riders have to definitely be the frightening thing with dust like this. If a rider goes down, it's very difficult for the other riders to see him. Oh, the yellow flames go back in and Paul Hurry looks over his shoulder. He's 
Lewis up in a third, and Dave Steen is riding in fourth, but Paul is looking for that third spot. the far side, you can see Paul Hurry still leading around that pit bend, going into his last lap this time as he comes past it, so he's going to maintain a maximum, he had a 10 point first time out for a week, looking to do exactly the same this time, and watch for him on the far side, all the way along the back straight with his front wheel in the air. Lead as we see the checkered flag going out now as he starts to catch up on the same engine dust. Paul Hurry takes his second win. And for his finish in his second win, he's yeah. AC picks up four. He's having a good day so far. Number 86, Paul Hurry. In second place, 04, Ricky Sanford. In third place, number 8, that's Vince Kinchin. And fourth place, number 41, Dave Steen. Fifth place goes to number 23, Mike Trevitt. And sixth place, number 227. Seventh place, 145. Eighth place, 212. Ninth place, 151. Tenth place, 19. No other finishes. The time was 134.39. And that equates exactly to an average of 49 miles an hour. Well, one more heat to go in the second leg ride. Race 22, of course, the last of the second leg ride. We're still with the 500cc, one interesting one. This will be Ben Howe goes in this one. He's going to indeed have broken away as they go into that first bend. Well, we're looking to see how these two compete because they both, of course, had a win first time out. But look at Calvin Tatum breaking away. Well, Ben Howe has been caught by other riders as they go into this pit bend. But Calvin Tatum gets away from them. Tatum in second place. Well, Neville, of course, had problems first time out. You wonder whether two good rides in second and third leg rides will be enough. It's very, very tight with only three rides, of course. And Neville Tatum will be the example of that if we see how well he goes in his second two rides. Follows Neville Tatum to go past us. Kelvin Lee, Neville in second. Mark Seabright in third. Ben Howe is in fourth. So a good ride this from Mark Seabright, leading Ben Howe. In fact, had a win first time out. Oh, it starts to get difficult to pick these riders up, and I sympathise with all of you that are out there. It's been the same problem that we had in Summer last week. The surface of course, so much rain. So much rain was forecast, but it uh, didn't come. As we see a red flag going up, we've got riders uh, being slowed down as we've got the rider down here on the board. And very rightly, Marshall's pulling everybody inside. 